There's a lot of enthusiasm today. They were pretty fired up to get going. When you, when you look at Colorado, just now that you've had even more time, just what are the, the biggest things that stick out to you about their team? Put up a lot of points on, on Cal the other day. Yeah, you know, they are a, a much improved, different team than the team we played a year ago. Uh, they have been, they've won games and they're super competitive. They've had... Uh, you know, I, I thought that they played Arizona State real well, and of course they've won other games and and uh, lost in a crazy game last week, but a game that's pretty indicative of our league is competition. So, uh, you know, they have a smorgasbord of offense, lots of different stuff, and they've been very effective. They, The quarterback is a good player. Uh, they've got one receiver that is outstanding, but they utilize a lot of people and they do a nice job. What are some of the challenges that the altitude kind of poses and what have you guys kind of done to get ready for that? Well, hydration is the biggest thing we can do. You know, you got to rely on your be being in shape and then hydration starting now is a big factor. You encourage him to drink as much, get as many fluids yeah, get as possible. Yeah, get, uh, you know, it's, it's, people think, you know, get hydrated, start drinking water the day of the game. Evidently, uh, I don't know this scientifically, but I've been told that it, it's a process that builds up over at least a four-day period. Was the oxygen on the sidelines something you requested, or some? No, our our people are way ahead of the game on that. Back-to-back -back road games. Um, how do you think the team is going to be able to handle it? No, oh, I think you know it's football, so you gotta you can't really blink about stuff like this. You know, we'll I'm sure there's somewhere in there where it'll change up. We'll have to at home. And it's just life, and you just you really. Uh, don't bring it up as an issue. I mean, it, because it's you have to be adjustable. You don't know when the games are going to be, time of day, and, and then the schedule is dictated by uh, things way beyond our control. With Dockery back at flanker and Mulaney moving back over to split end, how do you think that's going to help the offense, if any? Well, I think that it, you know we can kind of get back to how we start practicing from the day fall camp started. That, that's probably the biggest issue in that training of those guys at that position has been over a period of time, we're dating back into with some of them into the spring. So, you know, I think that that continuity is always best. Oboom has been talked about so much in the early season with his, his four sacks. I mean, and, and he was somebody that you and, and Banker and other people were like, you know, he's coming along, but we don't want to say too much, but yeah. he's coming along. H have you been surprised about anything he's been able to do in the early season? He's been so successful rushing the passer. Well, I, I can't say I'm really surprised. Mm -hmm. I'm, I was always hopeful, uh, but I knew I had some common denominators that indicated we got a chance here, and one of them is that this guy's talented. Mm -hmm. You know, he's strong, he's big, he's long, he's fast, and he's an extremely hard worker. So you got a chance with those qualities. Keith Castle is obviously a smart guy, engineering major. How do you think the the way he thinks and that engineering background has kind of helped his playing career? Oh, I think he is pretty analytical about it, but I think he's also a jock. You know, I think that he does just go then and perform. I really like Keith. Uh, I love his who he is as a person, his attitude toward what he does. He's got a lot of pride in it. He's one of the hardest working people in the program. And he's made himself successful through his work and understanding of his craft. I think that's probably, those qualities go into his schoolwork the same. Now, whether it's carried over engineering-wise into the art of kicking, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what, did, what did it mean to you last year to be able to you know, put him on scholarship and give him? Well, it's always, it always feels good uh, to be able to do that. But the main thing about it, it was right. You know, he earned it. And, uh, you know, we basically give those guys, especially a lot, I would say uh, at least 50% of our specialists through the years, punters, kickers, snappers, have walked on and then had to find their way and earn it by being the starter. So, you know, Johnny Hecker did that, and, and just a string of guys have done that. So. Uh, that's what Keith did, and he just made it basically painfully obvious that he was going to be the punter. With so many injuries um, on defense right now, you know, Grimble, Tago, how do you expect the depth to be against Colorado? The depth will be less, uh, but the players, we, the one thing we did there is we started with pretty good depth, so we'll have good players playing still, and that, that's comforting. I hate not having those guys, but... 
you know, again, you have to adjust, and that's one of the factors that we have to do this weekend. I know Banker was upset with some of those uh, chop blocks from USC. What was your take on that? Well, you know, it, uh, probably legal blocks, you know, and just dangerous. That's, you know, they just, uh, it's kind of football in the trenches a little bit, but, uh, you know, there, there wasn't anything that uh, was illegal about that. Would you like that rule to maybe be examined at some oh, point? Oh, yeah. And you know what? Uh, that's a good point. It is constantly being examined, and they've come up with all different kinds of possibilities because they understand, everybody understands the issue. And, it, and uh, it's a, one thing to call that a chop block is probably not right. A chop block is a high and low. And this was not. A cut block? A uh, cut block, yeah. Just one on one cut block is, is what it is. But it, it's in a vulnerable area for a player and sometimes a defenseless player so that's that's where they have to what you said is right continue to look at it and find the best, best way to still play football and eliminate those somewhat higher level possibility of injury situations. Is that something you think you maybe would talk to the Pac-12 at the end of the season? Yeah we about? talk about all this stuff constantly. Mm -hmm. I mean the, the, the blocking below the waist still is a yearly conversation both at the NCAA, the AFCA, and the Pac-12 level.